So let's summarize the foundation that we laid for statistical inference. We did all of this in regards to a single mean. Again, this was to lay a foundation. So we talked a bit about the sampling distribution as well as the standard error. So remember, we think of our, our estimate, in this case, the mean, as being one of many possible estimates we could get, and the sampling distribution describes the theoretical set of all possible estimates. The standard error gave us an idea of, on average, how far will an estimate move from the true or population value. And we saw how these could be used to build confidence intervals. We can take our estimate, then tack on a margin of error, and be pretty confident that that interval captures the true or population mean. And we learned a bit about hypothesis testing and p-values. So how to test if the mean in the population is significantly larger than, smaller than, or different from some hypothesized value. Um, so these are really used to set a foundation for all of the statistical inference that follows. Okay. All these concepts hold regardless of what type of estimate we're talking about. Some of the mathematical details change slightly, but the underlying concepts are always the same. So, in general, we have this idea of a confidence interval, and it's usually going to take some form of estimate plus or minus some margin of error. And in our particular case, um, again, it's usually going to look like the estimate plus or minus some t-value times the standard error of the estimate. Okay. The estimate that we're using might change. Rather than looking at a mean, we might estimate a difference in means. And there we can go the difference in means in our sample plus or minus t times the standard error for the difference in means. Okay. Or we may look at Correlation, our estimate of the correlation, and tack on some margin of error. As estimates change, some things might need to change slightly. Rather than using the estimate, we might work on the log scale or things like these, but the underlying concepts are always the same. We also laid the foundation for hypothesis testing. Right? And again, these involve calculating some test statistic, which in some way or the other, compares the estimate that you got in your sample to the hypothesized value. How far is what you got in your data from what you would expect to have gotten if some null hypothesis is true? And divided by the standard error of the estimate, which again tells us on average, how far will the estimate move from the true value? So, and then this helped us get at the, the concept of calculating a p-value which, to, to summarize it simply, it helped get us the probability of getting our estimate or one more extreme. Right? And by more extreme, I mean one as far from the null or further. If the null hypothesis is true. Okay, and again, as you go through and learn different um, hypothesis tests and different approaches, the mechanics and some of the parts change, but the underlying concept is always the same. Okay, p-value, um, regardless of how we're trying to get it, is always trying to tell us what's the probability of getting the estimate we got in our data, or one even further from the null, if the null is true. Okay. So we talked a little bit about parametric tests, okay, or large sample tests. These are like the, um, the um, one sample t-test, or the confidence interval that we built. Um, we talked a little bit about other approaches like bootstrap approaches or um, resampling or non-parametric type approaches. Um, but whether we're looking at one variable, um, two variables, or more than two variables, the underlying concepts of a confidence interval and hypothesis test are always the same. Okay, again, whether we're looking at a parametric or non-parametric approach, um, a bootstrapping type approach, the underlying concepts are always the same. Okay, so what we've done so far is lay a really useful foundation for what is a confidence interval, what's a hypothesis test, and um, what are the concepts they're based on. When we get to working through um, other, um, other analytical approaches in this course, we're gonna rely a lot more on software, and we are gonna look at the formulas for the calculations so we understand what is it these approaches are trying to do, but we're not gonna do hand calculations like we have um, 
up to this point. Okay. These are going to help us understand the underlying foundation and concepts of these more um, advanced approaches. Hope you guys liked the video. Subscribe to our channel. Like our videos. Stick around guys, because we got lots more. Statistics is so much fun.